Hi, in the last few sessions, we talked the basics of machine learning models and their deployment in the open RAN. So it should be easy to understand the functionalities of RIC in the open RAN. RIC is Radio Intelligent Controllers. And we have two types of RIGs, Radio Intelligent Controllers in open RAN. First is Near Real-Time RIG and second is Non-Real-Time RIG. Near Real-Time RIG is having the functionalities which are time sensitive, means network should act fast on the decision. Say network should perform the action in between 10 milliseconds to 1 second. Non-Real-Time RIG takes the decision to optimize the network for non-real-time functions which are not time sensitive. So, if any function that can wait for more than one second for the rig optimization, then that function can be deployed in non-real-time rig controllers. So, in simple words, any controlling function which needs to act within one second of time frame window, let's deploy them in the near real-time rig and the other controlling functions which can be performed in more than one second, then those can be deployed at non-real-time rig. So, you can see in the screen that near real-time rig is closer to the ODU and OCU and non-real-time rig is placed in some kind of data centers which is far from the users and takes care of non-real-time sensitive controlling functions. Let's quickly map these functions and nodes for the same example of resource management where the users are connected through the three different cells at three different locations which are connected to the same pool of OCU and one of the cell is highly utilized because it has more users actively using the broadband services compared to the other two cells. Means it is needed more resources to fulfill the user resource needs. So first, the data will be collected through the NMS. NMS is Network Management System. This collection of data includes what is PRB utilization of the cell, how many number of users attached with the cell, how much data is in the buffer, what is CC utilization, number of users per TTI, etc. These all type of data will be monitored continuously and feedbacks given to the non-real-time rig. Based on this all collected data from all the cells, non-real-time rig will trigger some decisions to release more resources from the pool or size up and size down of the overutilized and underutilized cells and this decision will be handled by near real-time rig which will allocate more resources to the OCU and ODU to balance the resources in the respective cells. Now this is one cycle. Again, the feedback will goes to the non-real-time rig based on the new current environment and performance. And this is continuous cycle, where controllers takes the decision based on the current network conditions. This was one of the example where you can deploy one functionality at non-real-time rig. Let's talk about the another intelligent function which can be deployed in real-time rig. For real-time RIC applications, we need some function which required to act within one second of time frame window. So one application is XApp. There are many more applications, but we will talk about this XApps here. So XApps is the concept which uses network slicing to serve more specific type of users. Using this function, network will allocate the resources in the dynamic environment by making a RAN slice. Consider the same network architecture where we have three different cells at three different locations which are connected to the one OCU in the pool and connected to the same real-time rig with the E2 interface. Now consider there is an enterprise consumer who takes in the service which offers guarantee 50 Mbps downlink and uplink throughput for all their employees. This means that RIC has the responsibility to provide the sufficient resources to cater minimum 50 Mbps to all of their users. And these users can be connected to any of the cells here, like some users can connect to cell 1, some connect to cell 2, and some connected to cell 3. But assume that most of the users connected to the cell 2. Note that there will be more users who are connected to the same cell but not belongs to that enterprise unit. So network need to serve those users as well. Okay, so if you understand the requirement, then think about the plan which you can implement in the network. Here, the X apps can help who actually create a network slice. This slice will reserve the sufficient resources for that enterprise user to cater minimum of 50 Mbps to all the users connected to that specific cell or DU. Well, there is one more problem which need to be looked for. 
because slicing the sufficient resources to cater 50 Mbps to a fixed number of users does not mean that all the users will get the 50 Mbps throughput, right? Maybe some of the enterprise users get 75 Mbps and others may only get 25 Mbps. This may also depend on the radio condition of the users, so the users with the good radio condition may have good coding schemes and can get more throughput using advanced antenna techniques like MIMO and special multiplexing or carrier aggregation etc. So here is the additional responsibility of XApps comes where it will decide to allocate the required resources through the max scheduler in the layer 2 and map the sufficient resources in the physical layer to offer minimum of 50 Mbps to all the connected users. This allocation is required to happen in very short span of time, hence this XApp function has to be deployed in near real time rig. Now quickly talk about one more application in non-real-time rig. The concept of real-time rig and non-real-time rig was basically introduced in OpenRAN to develop the more efficient network systems at different stages, which provides more flexibility to deploy the application based on their functionalities. Before talking about this app, you should know that Telecom Infra is one of the highest investment systems where only RAN part contributes around 70% of capex cost. Also in the operation of network, RAN parts takes around 60% of overall opex cost, which includes nearly 30% cost of energy means power or electricity which is required to function of RAN devices, data centers, core networks, etc. This means if we are able to improve the efficiency of this RAN system by deploying some new features and doing some advancement in the existing RAN systems, we can reduce this operation cost in the networks. So RFs is the feature which is designed to optimize the power efficiency in the open RAN network system. Let's discuss how it functions. So we know that in 5G and 4G, Telcos and operators uses different carriers and spectrum bands to serve their users. Out of these multiple carriers, one from the lower band carrier generally used for coverage and others from the higher spectrum band are being used to add more capacity in the cell or site. To serve these multiple bands, there are multiple radio units gets deployed at the cell or site and each radio unit required power or electricity to operate as well. This means that more the working radio modules at the site then more power and electricity is needed at site means more cost. However, the utilization is not always same. Sometimes cells are needed more capacity when more number of users are demanding the services and at some other point of time when very less users are connected to the cell or site then they can be catered with the lesser number of carriers. So this RF sends this requirement and gives the decision that if all the radio units need to be used to serve all the connected users or they can be handled from the lesser number of carriers. Like when the resource uses is less or active users are less. So in such condition, this RFs will switch off some of the radio units kind of standby mode or power saving mode until it sends that now more traffic is coming and more capacity need to be added in the cell. So it will switch on the units accordingly. Now you may already guess that this is something which not need to be decided quickly. Hence this RFs can be easily deployed in the non real time rig and the benefit is very straight. For the time the radio units are switched off, the power consumption gets reduced. This is one cell or site and this can be deployed from 100 to 1000 of sites in the network. So the cumulative cost definitely going to be reduced and that too without hampering the user experience because they will not get the resource crunch anytime. When they need it more capacity then it will be provided by switching on those capacity units and when traffic is less then the capacity modules will go into the power saving mode. In the next session we will be talking about cloud platforms in the open RAN so stay tuned for the updates. If you did not subscribe till now, then please do subscribe to learn and grow community for regular updates. If this video is informative, then please like this video, comment on video and don't forget to share. Thank you for watching.